We will kickstart today's conference with Dr. Chu Han Yi, our senior research fellow at the Institute of Policy Studies. He will be presenting early findings from the IPS survey on future of work Singaporeans want. Dr. Chu, please. Good morning. I share director's sentiments. How amazing, how wonderful, and how delightful it is to welcome everyone back to MBS again for our first full-scale Singapore Perspectives in three years. We have missed interacting with you in person, and we hope the program today will give you opportunities to interact with friends old and young, or old and new, young and old. To see your discussions on work, I'm here to share some of the findings from the IPS survey on the future of work Singaporeans want uh, that my colleague, Dr. Laurel Till, and I conducted. The purpose of conducting this study is to understand how prepared Singapore workers are to survive and succeed in the labour landscape facing rapid disruptions and an ageing population. The survey is aligned with the three key themes underlying this year's conference. For day one, the theme was how to adapt and succeed in the future of work. And the survey examines how prepared Singaporeans are to do so. For day two, the theme was how to succeed together. And our analysis focused on identifying vulnerable groups who may need more help. Today, the theme is how to balance and achieve different work aspirations of Singaporeans. And in a survey, we asked how much Singaporeans value different aspects of their work. So who do we speak, with? Who do we speak to? We recruited Singapore citizens, uh, NPR, age 21 and above, economically active, that is, uh, they're working or actively seeking work. The demographics profiles approximate the Singapore labor force uh, profile in 2021, um, where we under or over sampled the segments, weights were applied to correct for gender, age groups, and education groups. The final sample was 1010 or 1010. So it was a long survey, so in the interest of time, I'll just take us through some of the research highlights. And these are the five uh, highlights that we're going through today. First, the story so far. What are Singaporeans' perceptions of social mobility? Two, how mentally prepared are we for the future of work? Three, how uh, do we possess the critical core skills for modern work? What matters to Singaporeans at work? And what are we willing to give up for what we want? So first, what are Singaporeans' perceptions of mobility, social mobility? What has been our story so far? We've heard from policymakers and economists that Singapore has enjoyed tremendous income and social mobility over the last generation. Our GDP has grown, our household income has increased, and our median personal income has also increased. Uh, we, have, we already have these objective measures of social mobility and growth, so for our survey, we took a different approach and we examined social mobility subjectively. That is, do Singaporeans feel that their lives are better? For this, we deployed the tool that you see on screen. It's called the MacArthur Social, uh, MacArthur Social Status Scale in the survey. We first asked respondents, where would you place yourself on this ladder in your childhood or youth? Where? The top of the ladder, rung 10, are the folks who are best off. These are the people who have the most money, most education, and so on. And the, uh, the bottom rung, rung 1, are the folks who are worse off. These are the ones who have least money, least education, and so on. And then we ask them again, where would you place yourself on this ladder now? And now was approximately um, Q4, 2022. And what Laurel and I did was to put together this very colorful Sankey chart that you see on screen. We put all the childhood scores on the left, of the screen and then map them to their adult scores on the right. And then we calculated the differences between the scores now and scores then. So for 
Six in 10 of the respondents, they reported a higher ladder score now than before. So they experienced upward mobility. For one in four, the current score is the same as their childhood score, and for one in six, the current score is lower, or they experience downward mobility. Some uh, data patterns that we observe, a higher proportion of older respondents reported upward mobility than younger respondents. And we think this is because they have had more years to accumulate wealth, and they were working in times of strong economic growth. What is heartening is the chart on the right, which observes that nine in 10 respondents who put their childhood ladder scores in the lowest bracket. So when they were young, it was one to four, but now their lives are a lot better. So that is the story of strong social mobility so far, but what about the future? Are Singaporeans ready to take on the future of work? And can the country continue to enjoy the social mobility that it had enjoyed for the last few decades? We've heard on the first day of the conference from Minister Chan Chun Singh on the future of education, which entails shifting mindsets from the first 15 years of formal education to the next 50 years of lifelong learning. And do Singaporeans have the awareness and mindsets for what they have to do? And the findings on the survey suggest yes. Uh, two in three think that it's uh, likely that the way that the work is done in the current roles will change significantly in the next couple of years. So Singaporeans are aware, and those with higher educational attainment deem it more likely. Three in four respondents think that they will likely have to reskill to adapt to work changes. Older respondents are less likely to think the same. Three in four respondents are open to changes in their work. This openness narrows with age again. Six in 10 respondents are open to changing their occupations or careers. Older respondents um, and the openness narrows with age. Sorry, I got the slides mixed up. So this says the one in four respondents are not open to uh, changing their occupations. So all in all, a majority of the respondents are aware and they are ready to embrace change. So we're looking at about two in three, two, three in four um, respondents or Singaporeans who are ready. Groups that are consistently less open or less ready to adapt are older, Singapore, uh, older respondents 55 and above and those with lower educational attainment. So that was about mindsets and the groups who may need more help. What about skills? Do we possess the critical core skills to succeed in work? On screen, you see the critical core skills framework by Skills Future Singapore. These are skills required by workers to be successful at work. For our survey, we asked respondents about two of the three top skills, self-management and creative thinking. In terms of critical core skills, we observed a persistent gender gap. Uh, actually, because we have the audience, let's walk that back a bit. Before we examine that gender gap that you, screen, that you see on screen, let's look at the overall proportion of respondents saying that they actively seek career-related training. So you see the overall figures, about 43% actively seeking on network, about 48%, that's about half which coincidentally is the proportion of Singaporeans who use their skills future credit, about 50% or so. Now, recall that earlier in the presentation, about two in three to three in four are aware that they have to adapt and are open to changes. But what you see here is that less than 50% are actually doing so. So there is a gap between the respondents' awareness for what they have to do and what they are actually doing. This, we think, is the higher order gap between mindsets and action that we need to overcome together. And then we look at the gender gap on screen, where women are less likely than men to pursue career management activities such as self-directed training and networking. They also rate themselves lower in their self-efficacy of creativity skills and interest in creative work. That's not to say that they are actually poorer in creativity skills. They just rate themselves lower um, than the men. 
Another significant finding is that um, we found that women are less likely than men to make sure that they get credit for the work um, that they do. In panel three, we heard from Mr. Indranil Roy, uh, Indro from Deloitte, that one of the rules of modern work is that we can work anywhere or everywhere, but we need to work loudly. Here you see that only 40% of the respondents do so, and women are even less likely to do so, uh, 37%. So maybe this is something that we can discuss in the later panels. Another finding of interest that we'll be pursuing is that all things considered, the childhood SES ladder scores that you saw are a significant factor in the mastery of the um, critical core skills. Citrus paribus, all things considered. And this will take a bit more analysis, and Dr. Lorotio will be taking this research further after the conference. We also asked survey respondents which aspects of their jobs matter the most to them. These are the 15 aspects that we ask respondents to rate. Overall, pay adequacy, workplace ethics and values, and comfortable working conditions are, are the top three most important aspects of the job. Being recognized, career advancement, and task variety are least important. So those were the three top uh, aspects of the work that are valued. But there are differences in priorities for different age groups. Referring to the yellow highlights, uh, younger workers value growth and learning opportunities, as well as career advancement and job security less. Uh, referring to the blue highlights, middle age and older workers value job autonomy more than younger workers. And the green highlights, understandably, career advancement is least important for older workers. So for the employers in our audience, our survey does corroborate with other studies that observe that different generational workers value different aspects of their job, and that could have uh, implications on the multi-generational teams at the workplace. And I think uh, the second panel after this will delve into this topic. On the topic of diversity and inclusion, regardless of age, respondents agree that it is very important to include persons with mental health conditions and persons of disability at the workplace. On the topic of meaningful work, PMATs are more likely to believe that they have meaningful careers and make a positive difference in the world of work, uh, in, their, in, in their work um, and in the world. And we think going forward, we can do better about valuing the hand and hard work that these other occupations engage in so that they too can feel that their jobs matter and um, they are valued in society. Finally, we asked respondents what are they willing to give up at work. Sadly, over half the respondents, 54%, will be willing to accept less pay or a lesser work role for the benefit of their family or personal life. Older respondents are most willing to make this trade-off. Similarly, older respondents are also more willing to accept less pay or lesser work role, or lesser work role for work that contributes to something that's more important or meaningful. The youth are the least compromising. Now, we wanted to highlight these observations because earlier we saw that older workers are less open to changes in their work and they're less aware, less ready. But here, we see that they're also more willing to compromise at the workplace for a greater cause and for greater meaning. Older workers have their place and are valuable in their own right. So here we are, the brisk walk through what we thought what we think are the most interesting findings from the survey. I won't read out the summary on screen again. I see that we have a minute. So in the spirit of interaction, how about we do something different for this conference and I keep quiet for a minute and you share your thoughts on what you thought was the most interesting finding with the guests to your left and right. To keep to time, I think we need your attention back in exactly one minute. So let's start, turn to your left and right and say, hi.
and that is time. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you, are, you, are, you have had an interesting discussion. Thank you for your participation in the presentation. And I hope you will have a fruitful rest of the conference. I'll hand the time back to our MC.